for freedom and independence. I am certain that, like the people of Estonia, Ukraine too will prevail. Thank you. Thank you. NATO Secretary General in Stoltenberg, please. Prime Minister Kalas de Kaya, um, uh, congratulations on uh, Estonia's Independence Day. And uh, uh, President von der Leyen, uh, der Usla, it's an uh, honor to be together with both of you here in uh, Tallinn today on this very symbolic uh, day. Over a hundred uh, years ago, Estonian troops fought bravely for their freedom and independence. Independence was short-lived, but the Estonian people never gave up. And with the fall of the Iron Curtain, you regained your freedom. And thank you so much for inviting me to be part of the uh, celebrations uh, today. Uh, the flag, the flag raising uh, ceremony and the wreath laying ceremony was really moving. And uh, it uh, demonstrates how much you value your uh, freedom. Your history is a strong reminder uh, that we cannot take our freedom for granted. Freedom is not for free. We must fight for it every day. Today it is uh, the Ukrainian people who are bravely fighting for their freedom. And despite a dark year of despair and destruction, their determination and courage will no doubt prevail. One year ago, President Putin launched his full-fledged invasion of Ukraine, an illegal war of aggression in blatant breach of basic international rules. He wanted to break the will of the Ukrainian people, and he wanted to break our unity. President Putin failed. Ukraine stands, and NATO and the EU stand with Ukraine. Yet Putin has not given up his goals. He wants a different Europe, where Russia can dictate what neighbours do. He is not preparing for peace. He is preparing for more war. So we must give Ukraine what they need to prevail. Some worry our support to Ukraine risks triggering escalation. But there are no risk-free options. And the biggest risk of all is if President Putin wins. Because the message to him and other authoritarian leaders would be that they can use force to get what they want. That will make the world more dangerous and us more vulnerable. So supporting Ukraine is not just morally the right thing to do, to do it is also in our own security interest. That is why NATO allies are providing unprecedented support to Ukraine, working hand in hand with the European Union. Again, Estonia is leading by example, providing more military aid as a share of GDP than any other country. NATO presence protects the space for allies to provide this support. Since 2014, we have significantly reinforced our presence and readiness from the Black to the Baltic Sea, including here in Estonia. NATO's multinational battle group in TAPA, led by the United Kingdom, deters aggression. Fighters from France and Germany help protect your skies. And NASAMs from Spain will augment your air defences. All this sends a clear message to Moscow. NATO will protect and defend Estonia and every inch of Allied territory. Our Article 5 commitment is iron plant. All for one and one for all. And at our Vilnius summit in July, we'll take further steps to strengthen our collective defence. We also see progress as regards the historic accession of Finland and Sweden into our alliance, two close neighbours of Estonia. 28 out of 30 allies have already ratified the accession protocols. I had good discussions with President Erdogan in Ankara last week. 
We agreed to restart the talks and to convene a trilateral meeting between Finland, Sweden and Turkey at NATO headquarters in mid-March under my auspices to discuss the implementation of the agreement made last June and how to complete the accession process. And it is good that the Hungarian Parliament will start ratification process next week. Our aim is for both Finland and Sweden to join as soon as possible. This will strengthen their security, it will strengthen Europe's security, and it will strengthen NATO. So there, Kaya, there, Ursula, thank you once again uh, for our excellent discussions and at least for your strong commitment to the transatlantic bond for North America and Europe standing together to protect our freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's possible for me to, to ask questions. Please do state your name, media outlet you're representing and to whom the question is addressed to. Please use microphone, which with my colleague will assist and we have first ready there. Please. Yes. Thank you, Tarmo Moiberg, for uh, public broadcasting. Uh, questions to all of you, actually. Um, uh, about China's position paper uh, about uh, Ukraine, and it has 12 points. I would like to know, do you find it credible, especially as, it, um, as the China abstained United Nations vote yesterday about Ukraine? And also, before the war started, U.S. shared intelligent info about Russia's troops and preparation. So... Has the United States shared any info about its claim made by Mr. Blinken that China is considering giving weapons to Russia? Thank you. Yeah, so, um, indeed, the Chinese paper, I think you have to see the principles they shared. It's not a peace plan, but principles that they shared. You have to see them against a specific backdrop. And that is the backdrop that China has taken side by signing, for example, an unlimited friendship uh, right before the invasion, Russia's invasion in Ukraine started. So we will look at the principles, of course, but we will look at them against the backdrop that China has taken sides. On the question of uh, supplies of uh, military support from uh, China to uh, Russia, we have not seen uh, any uh, actual uh, delivery of uh, lethal aid. Uh, but what we have seen uh, are uh, signs and indications that uh, China may be planning and considering to supply uh, military uh, aid to uh, Russia. And China should not do that because that will be to support an illegal war of aggression, uh, breaching international law and, uh, and violating the UN Charter. And China is a member of the UN Security Council, and they have a particular uh, responsibility to protect the UN Charter. And this is a war of aggression violating uh, exactly that uh, charter. Um, then on uh, uh, the... The proposals uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the points presented by China. Uh, <clears throat> so, first of all, China uh, doesn't have much credibility because uh, they have not been able to uh, condemn uh, the illegal invasion of uh, Ukraine. Uh, and they also signed just days before the invasion uh, an agreement between President Xi and President Putin. Uh, uh, on uh, uh, limitless uh, partnership with Russia. Uh, so uh, I think what we see now in uh, Ukraine uh, is that uh, President Putin is not preparing for war. He is preparing for the exact opposite, for more war, for more uh, new offensives. And therefore, most likely, this war at some stage will end at the negotiating table. But if we want uh, a peaceful uh, solution, we need to also realize that what happens around that negotiating table is totally dependent on the strength and the situation on the battlefield. So meaning that if we want a peaceful negotiated solution where Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent nation, then we need to support Ukraine military now. Because that's the only way to create the conditions where President Putin realized that he will not win on the battlefield. He has to sit down and uh, accept Ukraine as an independent sovereign nation in, uh, in Europe. So, military support today is the way 
uh, to achieve a peaceful agreement uh, tomorrow. Yes, actually, I have uh, nothing really uh, to, uh, uh, to add because uh, all was said. Uh, UN Charter is also uh, something that uh, China uh, is and should be respecting, and it says the principles of uh, territorial integrity and also the right to uh, defend one's country and, and sovereignty. Um, so if they are providing military uh, aid to uh, aggressor, then they go against this uh, UN Charter. Uh, and, and that is uh, dangerous to the uh, peace of the world uh, in general. Thank you. We have our next one. Pradeep, please. Um, my name is Gülli Kapper, and I come from the Postimes. I have one question to the President of the European Commission and one question to the Secretary General of the NATO. To the Commission, what measures will you take to prevent uh, the circumvention of the European sanctions uh, by the third countries? And to the NATO Secretary General, how NATO will help Moldova to secure its defense against Russia? So we are, uh, in our sanction packages, we are increasing uh, the measures to make sure that there are neither loopholes nor a circumvention. Uh, we have a sanctions envoy, David O'Sullivan, who is uh, traveling to different third countries. Uh, to reinforce uh, the message that any kind of um, circumvention of sanctions will have consequences. For example, we have included in our sanctions packages the possibility to list persons or entities that are even from third countries that are circumventing the sanctions by exporting goods from or importing goods to third countries from the European Union and then bringing them uh, to Russia. Um, so here, uh, increasingly, we are um, giving a very clear message. This, this will not be tolerated, and this will have consequences. On Moldova, uh, of course, we are uh, concerned when we see uh, 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 the challenges they face, uh, and that's a direct consequence of the war uh, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, Moldova is a, a close and highly valued partner of NATO. We have been working with them for many years. We have agreed now to step up uh, our partnership and also to help to build uh, uh, defense capacity. Uh, we have a, a tailored defense capacity building um, uh, 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 agreement in place uh, uh, to uh, help to strengthen their different uh, uh, institutions and to help them uh, uh, to strengthen their uh, resilience. We also welcome, of course, efforts by individual allies. I uh, also know that the European Union is doing a lot to uh, support Moldova, because I think if there's one lesson uh, uh, that at least uh, we can learn from the war in Ukraine, is the importance of supporting those countries which are vulnerable for Russian aggression as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, that also uh, applies for Moldova, and that's, uh, that's the reason why I need to work more closely and provide more support to Moldova. Thank you. Next one, please. Hello, Herman Gelomes from Delphi. As you all know, any positive signal from these two large multinational powers can serve as a boost for morale, uh, for troops uh, on the front lines and an entire nation in suffering. So my question to President von der Leyen would be, Ukraine would like to begin accession talks to the EU within this year. Can uh, you tell Ukrainians what their government can do to make that dream happen? And Secretary General Stoltenberg, um, President Zelensky is coming to the Vilnius summit, and uh, Ukraine would like to see a clear pathway to membership there. So what can the Ukrainians do to make that dream happen? And I'd like the Prime Minister's thoughts on that as well. Thank you. Yes, the accession process is a merits-based process. So it's not a rigid time-wise, but it depends on uh, the candidate country. And it is amazing to see the determination of Ukraine to um, go through this thorough process, but at utmost speed. And um, already their step forward to uh, apply for becoming a candidate country, um, they had to do a lot. And it was impressive to see uh, how they were delivering while fighting a war. It also shows the functioning of the administration and the highly digitized state of the administration, which is impressive. Therefore, it is, of course, in the hands of Ukraine how they perform, how they reform, 
how they improve uh, the status uh, of their country with strong support from the European Commission because this is our task uh, to advise and to support and to help as much as possible on that. Um, so I can only say it is impressive to see uh, the, the, the strong will of Ukraine to join the European Union, uh, the willingness to reform thoroughly their country, <coughs> and all this while fighting an aggressor, uh, this is outstanding. It's in their hands. We will have as a process an oral presentation of the progress in spring to the member states, but more important is the report in fall that summarizes for all candidate countries in the accession process their progress during the year. And I am confident that Ukraine will excel in this uh, report in the fall that then will be presented to the member states. I have invited uh, President Zelensky to attend the NATO summit in uh, Vilnius in uh, July. Uh, I really hope that he can be, be there in person, but of course it depends uh, uh, on the situation because he is in the midst of a uh, full-fledged war invasion of his uh, country. Um, NATO's position on uh, membership for Ukraine remains unchanged. Uh, we have stated several times that uh, Ukraine uh, will become a member of the alliance. <clears throat> At the same time, we all realize that uh, the first step uh, to ensure that that will happen is to ensure that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent nation. Without a sovereign, democratic, free Ukraine, the membership will not be an issue at all. So all our focus, all our efforts is now on ensure that Ukraine prevails, that Putin doesn't win, because then there will be no issue of membership for Ukraine. Then when this war ends, then, of course, we need to ensure that um, history doesn't repeat itself. Because uh, there, is, there is a pattern uh, of uh, Russian aggression. Georgia in 2008, uh, Crimea and Eastern Donbass in 2014, and then the full-fledged invasion uh, last year. And we need to make sure that when the war ends now, that uh, Russia is not able to continue uh, to uh, chip away at European security, and we need to break this cycle of Russian aggression. This will be about enabling the Ukrainians to have strong armed forces themselves, so they can deter aggression themselves. But it will also be an issue of creating the framework uh, uh, and the, and the, and the uh, uh, political framework that, that, that sends a clear message to Moscow that they, that they cannot continue to attack uh, an independent, sovereign, democratic neighbor, uh, Ukraine. Uh, so we need to help uh, Ukraine move forward on the Euro-Atlantic path. Uh, Ukraine is part of the Euro-Atlantic uh, family, uh, and the first step is to ensure that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign nation. Mm -hmm. To, to add to that, uh, grey areas are a source of conflict and war, and that's why uh, NATO has been the peace project. We have to believe in Ukraine, and therefore we also have to give military aid so that uh, Ukraine can uh, defend themselves, and, and then when the war is over, then uh, move on with the open-door policy of NATO. Thank you. Next one, please. Maris Elran for German Public Broadcaster RD. A question to the Secretary General. You mentioned talks with um, Turkey. Uh, how can NATO act on, tur on uh, Turkey in order to speed up Sweden's joining process? So, first of all, this is a priority for NATO and, and for me. Uh, and I'm confident that both Finland and Sweden will become full members of the alliance. Um, second, I have uh, uh, just met with President Erdogan, and, uh, and of course we discussed also how we can make progress uh, on, the, uh, on the accession of Finland and Sweden, uh, and uh, uh, we agreed to restart the talks, uh, to convene a meeting in, in Brussels at the NATO headquarters with Finland, Sweden and, uh, and Turkey, um, and, uh, and uh, we need also to understand that so far this has been the quickest accession process in NATO's modern history. Uh, Finland and Sweden applied in May last year. Already in June, 30 allies, also Turkey, decided to invite them. And uh, we also, all 30 allies agreed, including Turkey, uh, on the accession protocols, and all 30 allies have signed these uh, accession protocols. Then, 
28 out of 30 allies have already uh, ratified in the national parliaments. The Hungarian parliament has made declared that they will start the accession uh, process, uh, also the discussions and the decisions uh, last uh, next week. Uh, and then um, uh, on, on Finland and Sweden, um, I cannot guarantee you any specific date, uh, but um, uh, on Finland, Turkey has made it clear that uh, they don't see any problems with ratification. Uh, with Sweden, there are some issues still remains. I have made it clear that both Finland and Sweden have lived up to their commitments uh, they uh, um, signed up to uh, uh, at the NATO summit uh, uh, last uh, uh, year. Uh, so I think the time has come to ratify both of them now. Um, but of course, uh, Turkey has no other position. And then we have this uh, trilateral mechanism to address how to, uh, how to ensure that, uh, that uh, the accession process uh, continues to move uh, forward. Uh, and, uh, and the most important thing is not uh, whether Finland and Sweden joins exactly at the same time. The most important thing is that they join as soon as possible. You can briefly add one more thing, and that is that we need to also understand that Finland and Sweden are in a totally different place now. They are much more secure now than before they applied. Because uh, as part of the accession process, they have now uh, been integrated more and more into NATO's civilian and military structures, uh, uh, defense planning, capability targets. Um, we exercise more together. NATO has increased its presence. Uh, different allies have also uh, provided uh, bilateral security assurances. So it's absolutely inconceivable that Finland or Sweden uh, uh, will be faced with any military threats from Russia without NATO uh, reacting. So uh, uh, we are uh, making uh, a lot of progress. We have come a long way already, and I'm confident that we will also finalize this uh, process. So, and time for final question, please. James Bayes from Al Jazeera. Secretary General, I've already asked you this once this week, but please, can you tell us what evidence you have that China is, giving, is thinking of giving weapons to Russia? And to all three of you, I know this is the final question, so very quickly and directly, you're here for Estonia's independence, but what message directly to President Putin do you want to send today about Ukraine's independence? Well, um we are monitoring closely what China is doing, uh, and we have seen signs that they may be considering and planning to send uh, uh, lethal aid to Russia. This will be a very big mistake. This is very serious, and that's, for, that's also why the United States and other allies have uh, conveyed uh, so clearly that this should not uh, happen. Uh, then briefly on the message to Moscow. The mes message to Moscow is that President Putin started this war. President Putin can end this war today by redrawing his uh, forces. Uh, if he doesn't do that, we will stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. Uh, and allies have provided unprecedented level of military support to Ukraine because this is about Ukraine. It will be a tragedy if uh, President Putin wins for the Ukrainians, but it will be dangerous for all of us. And therefore, uh, this is in our own security interest to ensure uh, that uh, Ukraine prevails. Ukraine is not only fighting for its own independence and territorial integrity, but also for universal values. And these are the values of peace, respect for the international law, respect for the UN Charter, and therefore, Ukraine is not only fighting for its independence, but also for all of us. And we will stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. We have shown resilience, unity, and determination during the last 12 months. And President Putin can bet on the fact that this will be doubled down in resolve, unity, and determination to stand by Ukraine. Yes. Um we are united, uh, as shown, and we are united behind Ukraine, uh, and Russia can't win this war. So uh, sooner uh, Russia realizes that uh, this aggression was a mistake, uh, the better to everybody. Thank you. So thank you, everyone. This concludes the press conference. Thank you for attending. Thank you for following online. Have a great afternoon.
parādīgs! Jūsu darbīgs! Vai, mā! Arvinda, prijāni vatri pasvarīs trīs. Rīvis kūsku un ceicis mēs. Patrīvēm, ko lai tikai esam. Tu par jaunu radzi! Tere! Rīvis! Aro Kindra! Jaudu par jauni! Jaudu par jauni! Vai bataljam parādīgs rīvis, kur viņš kūst, kad cīts ar aicu vēlēs gāju bataļiem ļoļām Parāds Kohendudā.
aparaat terituseks valvel aparaat keskele vaa Ära Eesti Vabariigi president, Eesti Vabariigi aastaväeva paraadiks on rivistatud Eesti kaitseväe, kaitseliidu, naiskodukaitse, liitlaste, sisekaitse akadeemia ja vangla ameti üksused. Rivis on 881 osalejat, kaks orkestrit, neli teenistuskoera ja 28 õhikud tehnikat, nende hulgas kaks haubitsad kõigest, mis me ära annud oleme Ukraina meeskondadega. Kaitseva johataja, Kindral Herem. Täna, hära kindral. Maaväelased, tere! Tõis! Vaeva presidenti! Head vabariigi aastapäeva! Vaeva! Õhuväelased, tere! Tõis! Vaeva presidenti! Head vabariigi aastapäeva! Tere väärased! Tere! Tervis! Hära president! Head vabaligi aastapäeva teile! Tere väärased! Tere! Hära president! Head vabaligi aastapäeva! Kaitseve Akadeemia, tere! Tervis! Hära presidenti! Head vabaligi aastapäeva! Tere!
23. jalave pataljon. Tere! Head, vabariigi aastapäeva. Tere! 21. jalave pataljon. Tere! Tervis! Aeva presidei! Head, vabariigi aastapäeva. Kuperiano vlased, tere! Tervis! Aeva presidei! Head, vabariigi aastapäeva teile! Vahi pataljon, tere! Tervis! Aeva presidei! Head, vabariigi aastapäeva! Side pataljon, tere! Tervis! Aeva presidei! Head, vabariigi aastapäeva! Kaits riitlased, tere! Tervis! Aeva presidei! Head vabariigi aastapäeva teile! Tere! Nais kodukaitse, tere! Tervis! Aeva presidei! Head vabariigi aastapäeva teile! Sisekaitse Akadeemia, tere! Tervis! Aeva presidei! Head, vabariigi aastapäeva teile kõigile! Tere! Vangladeenistus, tere! Head, vabariigi aastapäeva. Paraad, otse, vaat, mõõgad, tuppe, aseta. Paraad, vabalt. Aastatud Eesti vabaregi president, peaminister, riigikogu esimees, ministrid, ekselentsid, külalised, sõdurid, head Eesti maa inimesed. Neil päevil 105 aastat tagasi loeti Eesti maa linnades ette iseseisuse manifesti. Siis kuulutati Vene tsaaririigi alustugede purunemist ja loodeti saabuvat rahu ning oma riiki. Oma riigi oleme me välja võidelnud. Me oleme selle kaotanud ja uuesti tagasi võtnud. Vene riigi üks alustugi, imperialistlik mõttelaad ja oht on meil aga samuti säilinud. Enamgi veel, aasta tagasi langes mask ning Venema valitsejad näitasid oma tegelike kavatsusi ja meetodeid. Kahjuks on neil valitsejail oma rahvatoetus. 
läbi oma ajaloo on Eesti kujunenud riigiks, mis teab iseseisvuse hinda, oskab enda ees seista. Aga me mõistame ka teiste muresid ja teame, millist abi neil vaja on. Möödunud aastal oleme me rahva ja riigina käitunud oma sõnade ja väärtuste kohaselt. Toetades Ukrainat oleme liialt kaua arutanud, kas teised rikkamad peaksid rohkem tegema, kas meie väiksemad peaksime olema alal hoidlikumad, sest me teame, et Ukraina sõduritel pole vahet, kas relv ja laskemoon on suurest Ameerikast või väikesest Eestist. Neil pole vahet, kas meditsiini vahendid tulevad Pariisist või Paidest. Neil on seda lihtsalt vaja. Nemad kaitsevad ja päästavad inimelused. Ka meil peaks olema vähe tähtis, kas rüüstajad ja okupandid hävitatakse meie väheste või teiste paljude vahenditega. Me ei hindame päästetud eluda väärtust. Meie abi aluseks ei ole tulnud kuskilt poliitiline juhis. Meie abi, olgu sõjaline või mitte, on alguse saanud ikka teadmisest, mida vajatakse. Sellel on järgnenud meie inimeste tahe, ametnike tarkus ja poliitikute julgus aidata. Me oleme käitunud nagu tugev riik ja rahvas, eelkõige moraalselt tugev. Samas oleme me suutnud ehk üllatada ka füüsiliselt. Suhteliselt väike kaitsevägi, mida vahel on pilgatudki, on ootamatult demonstreerinud relvi ja vahendid sellisel hulgal, mida mitte keegi ei osanud oodata. Ja ma tean, et kaitsevägi suudab üllatada veelgi omasid positiivselt, vastaseid negatiivselt. Seda enam, et aastaga on meie kaitsevägi ainult tugevamaks saanud. Me oleme suurendanud oma laskemone varusid ja uuendanud oma relvastust. Suurenenud on ka Kaitseliidu liikmeskond ehk maakaitse. Täna siin paraadil Kaitseliitu esindavad üksused on komplekteeritud isikoosseisuga kes liitusid möödunud aasta jooksul. Me oleme parandanud aastaga liitlaste tugevduste juhtimist Eestis. Oleme loonud diviisi. Lisaks EFP lahingugruppile, õhuturbe missioonile, NATO staabi elementile ja küberkaitse oivakeskusele on täna siin Eestis täiendavate üksustena USA mitmik raketti heitjad ja jalave komponi. Õige pea näeme me Prantsusmaa ja Hispaania üksuseid. Meie ühiskonnas on toimunud sama. Me oleme ennastki positiivselt üllatanud. Kui aasta tagasi räägiti kümnest tuhandest võimalikust põgenikust ja meie vastuvõttu võime piiriks määrati enam vähem sama arv, siis selle oleme tänaseks ületanud mitme kordselt ja ühiskond on sellega hästi hakkama saanud. Meie inimestes on mõistmist ja abistamise tahet. Õnneks oleme raskuste keskel unustanud, et raskuste põhjuseks pole mitte need inimesed või halb poliitika, vaid Venema agressiivne käitumine. Just see paneb meid olukorda, mida me võime nimetada hübriidsõjaks. Kuid ka siin oleme me hakkama saanud rahvana, riigina, aga ka riikide liiduna. See annab lootust, et kui meie jaoks asjad hullemaks peaks minema, siis me saame samuti hakkama. Selle tõestuseks on meie inimeste aktiivsuse kasv ja valmis olek lüüa kaasa riigi kaitses. Olgu selleks suurenenud kaitseliitu astumine või ettevõtjate riigi kaitse toetamine. Selle tõestuseks on aina suurenev arvamus, et meie suudame kaitsta ja mina kavatsen selles osaleda. Eesti sõjavägi on reservarmee. Reservväälased teie oletegi Eesti kaitseve põhijõud. Sel aastal kutsub kaitsevägi õppekogunemistele üle 25 000 Eesti kodaniku. Lähikonna toetus ja mõistev suhtumine on reservväälasele väga oluline, et osaleda õppekogunemisel hea tunde ja teodahtega. Seega elukaaslased, kolleegid, sõbrad ja kõik teised kelle lähedane saab õppekogunemise kutse. Patsutage oma reservväele selle õlale ja saadke ta teele. Sest meid ähvardav oht 
ei möödu tõenäoliselt veel väga pikki aastaid ja tõenäoliselt tuleb meil veel pikalt toetada Ukrainat, sest Ukraina võit on alles esimene samm julgema tuleviku poole. Ukraina kaotus ja kurjuse võit ei ole aksepteeritav. Ukraina võiduni toetamise kõrval tuleb meil jätkata enda ohuks ette valmistamisega. Riikidel, aga ka inimestel on kombeks tülikaid asju edasi lükata. Ühest küllest ei raadsi raisata, teisalt loodetakse, et äkki läheb üle. Pealegi oleme me kinni isiklikes eesmärkides enda tarkuses. Nii olime vabadusse alguses, kuid sellest tulime välja. Nii olime kolmekümnetel lõpus ja see maksis kätte. 50 aastat hiljem suutsime jälle targad ja ühte kuuluvad olla. Võimalik, et täna oleme taas ajajärgus, kus tuleb loobuda mõnedest oma isiklikest eesmärkidest ja oma tarkuse võidukäigust. Nii riigi kui ühiskonnana tuleb meil tõenäoliselt järgmise aasta jooksul ja edaspidigi veel olla rohkem ennast oferdavad, teisi usaldavad. Aina rohkem peame tegema seda, mis päriselt tähtis ja vähem tähtsad asjad kuigi meeldivad tuleb tegemata jätta või edasi lükata. Seda riigina, ametina, erakonnana, organisatsioonina ja inimesena. Ainult nii saame paremini valmis olla selleks, mis ajalus meiega korduvalt sündinud on. Ainult nii saame agressorile vastu, kui ta tulema peaks. Eesti vabariigi 105. aasta annab selleks lootust. Meil on head inimesed, meil on iseseisev ja tugev riik, meil on usaldusväärsed liitlased ja me oleme seda kõike möödunud aastal tõestanud. Elagu Eesti vabariik! Paraat! Valvel! Paraat! Marsile! Liinurid! Joonele! Rühmade kaupa, kompani kahe, rühm ühe liinuri kaugusel, joondumine paremale, paraad, parem, pool. Eesti vabariigi lipudoim on ta otse ülejänud paigal, taktsammu, mars!